people. I'm John Marine, the beat maker, and i um, here in my room. I'm about to show you guys how to make a really cool beat. I guess it'll um, fall under the category of, again, an icy twat type beat, but uh, I like to think that I have my own soundscape at this point, but either way, I'm going to show you a little bit of this beat, and then I'm going to dive right into how I made it and how you can make it as well. I don't know why I turned the master volume down up here. So just to like give you a little quick tip, this up here turns down the volume of FL Studio, but it doesn't really affect the output in terms of your export settings. So instead of like, you know, holding down the um, the volume control thing on your computer, you can just do this as a quick little adjustment. But uh, let's take a look at the tools that I use here. This is the automation clip down here, obviously, but let's go to all. So I only use WaveStation and Trident, which is uh, both Korg products they're both Korg products and Korg is a um, you know it's a uh, how do I explain it? it's a brand that has a lot of reputation for good things in the music industry for the past like 25 30 years so I've, I trust Korg and I have two wave stations loaded up and a Trident and I also have these dr uh, these drum sets that you could find in the I believe IC Twat and Lord Fubu kits that I have here so this one the IC Twat 808 should be right here um, the icy twat hi hat should be there. The Dilla is in the uh, lunch pack. J Dilla, somewhere around here. Yeah, right there. And also the snare is there too. Um, that's a kick from J Dilla's set as well. And the <laughs> that, that right here, <laughs> that's also from uh, this one right here, the Lord Fubu Kit Volume Five Hundred Favorite Sounds. <laughs> Before I dive into the chords, I want to show you something that's really useful because some people probably won't even make it to the chord part of this video. I want to get right into the so that can help anybody. Uh, I saw it in the kick. As you can see, I have the kick loaded here. I didn't really do anything to it because even if it's showing it outside of the grid here, like if, it, if I were to boost it, you can still manipulate it up here like I did so that it doesn't clip. You don't have to like, as I mentioned previously in other videos, turn the in down or turn the out down. That doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't clip in the uh, mixing board. And the way you make it not clip is doing it up here with this volume knob, as you can see where my cursor is. But what is really important is I have it on stretch mode. And now why do I have it on stretch? It's so that I can manipulate the time multiplier without it, uh, you know, messing up the pitch, right? So if I put on resample, and then I turn the pitch down. I'm sorry, the time multiplier down. It sounds different in pitch. And it's not nearly as good as this sound. But if I take it to stretch, turn the time down to zero. That's really important. Turn the time down to zero because stretch will make the time knob right here go to some location that you don't want. I turn the multiplier down so that way the kick comes in like a little, instead of like a, you know, I don't want the kick coming in too hard. And then I hear a little click. So I can either take this, go to generic, and push this up here. That gets rid of the clicking right away. But for this purpose, uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to leave it because I already have this beat done. But I think I kind of brushed over a little bit. We'll talk about it a little bit more for a second. You want the time multiplier in a way where the sound of the sample sounds ideal versus like, that sounds good too. But for the context of this beat, that's what I wanted. Like I can't even do this. Now that's like a really heavy kick. So that's how you manipulate um, samples to their you know, fullest potential. I even did that for the, pretty sure I did that for the snare. Yeah, I have it here. And the reason you're hearing so much like artifacts is because I have a reverb on the master, which I'll get to later. The 808, also, this is important for the 808. If you don't want any like, um, some people they don't want 
a hard hitting transient on the 808. And what I mean by transient is the very initial sound over here. Sounds like a little bit of a kick in it, like a little thud. If I turn this to generic right here, this affects the playback uh, start offset. So I can get rid of this little transient right here and it'll just sound like straight 808. There's no thud or anything like that. It's just 808. And then you can also do it for the multiplier too. You can make the 808 way tinier. Turn it into like a Mexico Dro or a, a plug 808, even though it's an IC twat 808, which is normally really long. Turn off loop points too. You don't want any loop points and um, <clears throat> anything unless you're crossfading something, which I'll show you in a different video. But for the hi hats, we'll go over here. I have the multiplier um, here, and I turn the pitch up just for the context of the beat. You can do whatever you want, but the hi hats here are really clicky. And I like that for this beat, instead of like, you can hear so many things going on in the background if you turn the hi-hats too much on the multiply multiplicator, not the multiplier, the multiplicator. I can see that at the top left, where it says dock and time stretch. It's 188.06, but it's a multiplicator, not, the, not a multiplier. So I've been pronouncing it wrong. But I like it more towards the um, counterclockwise direction. So that way it has that transient, but it's not going to be like really raking through your speakers. Same thing for the snare. I think we went over this already. And another important thing is mod Y and mod X. Watch what happens when I turn mod X. I'm sorry, mod Y up a lot. Okay, for the sake of this tutorial, I should have done this earlier. I'll turn the reverb off so you can hear the pure sound. Then I turn it back down here. I even crank it up all the way over here. What it does is it's like, it says a low pass. I think that's from mod X, but mod Y is a high pass filter. So it lets the highs come through. So really it, it, it's like an exciter. It makes the highs really stand out more. But if I mess with the mod X and the mod Y at the same time, you get really nice sounds. That's pretty cool. It sounds like analog gear almost. So mod Y and mod X, mod Y is a high pass, mod X is a fast low pass. And they work with each other. Like if you turn mod Y down, I mean mod X down and mod Y up, you'll have some cool sounds. That's my stomach. Let's go into wave station. And if you don't know what I meant by that's my stomach, I just heard my stomach growl, maybe the mic picked it up too, but anyways. Um, I'll see here, let's see. I'm gonna sample, not sample, I'm gonna solo the chords. I think these are the chords. Turn it down a little more. So my favorite sound in Wave Station is by far uh, the box concrete sound. I just love the way it sounds, but I like to edit it too a lot. So I'll go into here and I'll go to patch filter I'll turn the exciter and everything up like here that's how you can get better sounding sounds in your uh, VST without having to EQ much just keep going here looks like everything's at a good amount and what that does is just, it brings out the clarity of the, uh, the sound more and it's different for every single um, VST but it should be under a filter tab like filter just turn mess with it a little bit like the cutoff should be high the exciter should be high. The keyboard tracking should always be high. Like everything should be high except for the uh, resonance. You don't want a lot of resonance. And then uh, we'll just go over like a quick little tutorial of Rave Station. Uh, for every single sound that you hit, there's like multiple sounds or patches within it. So like the pitch pad that you hear is like, like I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If I turn this down, it's just strings. But if I turn this up a little more, it's gonna be like, that little magical sound comes back. And that's, uh, that's pretty much what I know about Wave Station. <laughs> wave Station is a little bit more difficult to use. The second Wave Station, I think, is the melody. And that was just like a bell, I think. Oh, that's it. Electric piano, hybrid, same thing. And you can go into edit, patch. I don't think I did anything here. Oh, I did, yeah. Just a little bit. Put the volume back to max. We'll hear the beat, like, over here. Because I want you guys to hear this beat a little bit.
So by this time, you probably heard that little like screeching noise in the back, and that's just a texture from Trident. Trident is also a Korg VSC, as you can see, Korg is up here. Um, I didn't touch anything for this one. I remember specifically not doing that. But this is called Venusian Stories. It's under like the Prague. Uh, let's see where it is. Oh, doesn't want to tell me. But yeah, it's it's in Prague and it's under like this uh, category here. I'll show you. Yeah, sound effects. So SE tells you right here. Go back here. But to manipulate this sound, <laughs> the master EQ is what you want to use, not a filter. This does a lot, but you don't. You can do this too over here. More of like this is the amount of sound that will go through. So I cut it off like right here. Turn the low frequencies to whatever you want. Well, they're not working. Yeah, the low is gonna stay there, I guess. You turn the gain for each frequency up or down, depending on how you like it. Like the high frequency over here can go up or down. The low doesn't want to move for whatever reason, but normally it does for other sounds. And now we'll get into like the beef of what we're doing here. Um, you know, the meat and potatoes. How did I make this? How did I make this beat, right? So now I have to do a little bit of learning myself right now, because I'm looking at these chords here. They're just triads. And I remember making this beat a couple days ago, but like if you take a look here, this starts, this is just a major C scale. I can tell because they're all white notes, but I'll show you something here um, in FL keys actually, before I get into this. FL keys is a good way to like, um, just kind of like uh, troubleshoot stuff. Like if you hear something wrong with a beat, you can go into FL keys and you can hear exactly what's wrong with it if the sound isn't too clear in terms of what notes you're playing. So like B and F do not sound good together. C and F sharp don't sound good together. Why is that? It's because they're called tritones. And I shouldn't say they don't sound good together because sometimes you can play, I don't have my keyboard plugged in, but sometimes you can play notes like a huge chord that has a lot of consonants and just a little bit of dissonance and a tritone will give you that dissonance like or those are all the tritones it's just c sharp i'm sorry c to f sharp c sharp to g d to g sharp um you get it it's it's six semitones apart from each other three whole steps away from each other so like you got the c one two, three whole tones away from C. So D, E, F sharp, C and F sharp, no. And you ever find yourself, uh, or even a semitone away doesn't sound that good. Like watch this. Play that together in a chord, it doesn't sound that good by itself, but again, you can use it with different types of consonants and it'll sound good. Um, but about this, man, like if you play the keys and you don't drag your notes out, I like that because I don't, I play the keys. I never drag notes, um, but that's just me. Some people like to drag the notes. I'm noticing here there's no tritones anywhere, and it's all well. No, this is <laughs> that's not the C major scale anymore. So, hmm. I use scales to build chords. So, like for a minor scale, you have like here. We'll go back to FL keys. This is just theory now. It's not exactly how I made the beat. I want to show you how to make beats more than how to make this beat and that's the most important thing as a tutorial person is you want to show people how to do their own thing not how you do it in a way that is similar to me unless you want to be like me which i don't know why you would yeah i do but anyways one two three four five six seven eight there's the um eight notes well the eighth is an octave away from each other but there's seven notes in a scale and you can use scales to build off Chords. You can build scores, scores. You can build chords with scales. So just a little reminder though. The second of a scale is called the two. And the first is called a one or the root. And then the third. You know when people say like, oh, this is the third of C minor. That means it's a third note in that scale. But the second and the sixth are a tritone away from each other. I don't know why it's like that in a scale. I just know that if you play those two notes together in a scale and you build a chord off a of scale, you might get some results you don't like. So keep that in mind. Any single time you have a minor scale, the two and the six are a tritone away from each other. 
And uh, you can just build chords off of scales, like I said. So um, here, I'll just, I'll make a new chord in a new pattern. Let's make something with no tritones. Just legato it. Control L is legato. And uh, let's see, we'll use the two. The threes here. Four. So let's see again. <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this should sound good. Even if I do this, it'll sound good. Now we could try to do something outside of the scale. Like, um, I just avoid tritones, right? So, are there any tritones here? Does A, C sharp, A would be like, uh, A's tritone would be D sharp. So there's no tritones here. This should sound good. Oops. So that's how you get out of this like minor ninth rut. You know, like some people, they just go like this, play sevenths and ninths all damn day. Like I was doing that for a long time, so I can't judge you, but learn the scale and learn what a tritone is. That sounds amazing, right? Minor ninths sound cool, but it's like, God damn, after a while, play something else, man. So what I did here, <laughs> right, is I did that. I did exactly what I told you guys. I found no tritones to play and I just kept it going down the same pattern. So all together, this is just a little intro that I thought was cool. I was just playing this in the beginning, just dump score to pattern log or whatever. Dump log, score log to selected pattern. I just threw that here, sounded good. And then I played the rest of this. All on the same scale and no tritones. And then these are the same chords as this, except just going down a semitone each. And then we'll go to the, uh, I think, what is this? I don't even know what this is. Okay, that's the mill. Yeah, these are two separate patterns, but it's the same sound. I just recorded them at different times. And they follow the same scale. You use um, tritones especially, and to, to play a mill without something sounding like shit, find a note that works and then find a tritone away. It's hard to explain, or not, it's not hard to explain, it's hard to do, but it's easy to explain. This would sound good, that means this note doesn't sound good in the scale. The tritone away from it doesn't sound good in that scale. So that's the melody. Then for the 808s, bro, this is what I like to do. I love 808s. And I love, um, God, I got so many different patterns. I forgot what I did here. Oh, that's just a snare. I just try to think like in terms of 808s, uh, hmm. What sounds good over a period of time? Not what sounds good with the note that I'm playing. Like I can just go boom, 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 boom. But like what sounds good over an extended period of time by itself? Like I like to think if the the instrument were to be soloed, would it sound like a song on its own? And then all together, all the sounds together, would it sound like a really cool instrument? That Like if you were to play a note of this whole song, how do I explain this? Like, if this whole song, this whole sound, think of the song like a whole sound in a preset that you can switch up and down in pitch, right? If you're playing like C on it, it would sound like an instrument, like by itself. It would sound like a badass preset. That's how I like to think of my final product, like as a badass preset of a VST. When you just press it, this is what comes out. And if I turn the pitch up, it still sounds good. If you turn the pitch up and down, on the master and it still sounds good regardless of where you pitch it you did your job as an artist and i like to use these things to cheat or whatever when i make music um and then for the drums i always put the drums nowadays last so my order of operations is mel i'm not, not mel chords then i think this is the bass down here bass mel's then drums at the very last 
Why? Because when you throw in the drums, they kind of like constrict what everything else sounds like because the drums are so fast and they take up so much space. Normally, they're faster than other instruments that you're playing. So if you have the drums first or like after the mel, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice because you want the bass to really kind of drive the uh, the soundscape of your mix, your song, whatever you want to call it. And then the drums just fill in the gaps that the mel and the bass don't have. And that gives you a lot of room for the drums too. Like you'll think, oh, the drums will sound cool if I did like, for example, I have a pattern here with a, yeah. The snare actually goes up and down in pitch. Like I have multiple snares in a sound, you know, drum kit. But yeah, this is a snare. Now let's get to mixing, right? Um, oh, this is the most important thing in this whole video. Make sure that your mix is very close to mono. As you can see, I have the width turned down here for this mel. It's inside the vector scope, just barely. I might have done a little too much stereo here, but either way, as long as it's like in here, it's good. So after that, you just EQ it the way that you want to. You don't need to worry about this anymore. Like I used to just go like this and then use a plugin called Every Trim to turn the mid and side up and down, but it doesn't need all that. Like. I don't have every trim on this computer. This is my backup CPU, but every trim is a uh, like a little plugin from this website called airwindows.com. And it allows you to turn the mid down or the side down or up either way. It separates the mid from side and it uses it as like a leveler. And when you do that, remember no frequencies like in the bass and sub can be stereo. So if you turn all this, the side up and you leave the, the mid where it is, that means you're turning up straight melody like straight up um, mid and treble. And then you mono it, it's gonna sound really, really rich because it's gonna be that melodic sound that you want, but it's gonna come out in mono because you turn the knob down here, you use Ozone Imager, but you need something, I didn't use it here because I don't have it on this computer, but you need something that can turn the stereo and the mono signals up and down the way that you want. It's super helpful. Same thing for this, this is just the melody, the bass, uh, bass is interesting. <laughs> These are just like, you know how to use, if you're here, you know how to use distortion already. This is to like, um, you know, give it a richer sound, the bass at least. It gives the bass a richer sound. Fruity Blood Overdrive, you turn the color up, versus color down. It just makes it richer. Distortion, Fruity Fast Distortion, people don't know how to use this. Turn the threshold down, turn the pre up, leave the mix up, and then turn the post down. That's how you get that louder sound without it really turning into like a, whatever the hell that is. You can even turn the mix down. That works too, but I like to keep the mix up, the threshold down and the pre up. Then you EQ it here to turn the sub up. So the sound of the sub is there, but then you go to the frequency splitter. Ah, turn the mid up there and turn the sub down. So that way it's, you get that sub sounding. Uh, how do I explain this? You get that sub rich, beautiful, like, boominess there but it's turned down and tamed here because the frequency splitter turns it down so you have it eq'd but then you're leveling it down so that way you get that nice sound but you also turn it down so it's not like overkilling your stereo speakers i really 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 out of all these plugins use frequency splitter the most see that's too much it's a bit of a your fuck but yeah right there's good and then the mid if i don't have the mid up Kind of sounds the same, actually. Just a little bit of texture right there I put in for the mid. What else do I have? Oh yeah, so mix your drums in mono, please. There's nothing there that it needs to be stereo. Think about it, there's nothing in drums that needs to be panned out. Not panned, you can pan it, but like nothing that needs to be like wide. You don't want wide drums, you want drums that are super clear. The more mono things are, the more clear it sounds to any speaker. All stereo speakers play stereo, not all speakers play stereo because some speakers play mono only, right? All speakers play mono though. So all stereo speakers play mono, all stereo speakers play stereo. Not all stereo speakers play good stereo though, but all speakers play good mono because mono is like the traditional way to use audio in terms of mixing. So I like to make all my bass, all my drums mono and I like to lean my melodies towards mono so that way if the stereo speakers aren't that good, it'll still sound great. And if the stereo speakers are good, then 
there's that extra goodness of stereo. You just got to think like layman's terms sometimes when you do this stuff. Um, there's nothing here that really needs to be talked about. These are just drums. And I like to level my drums very specifically. They got to be low because out of like phone speakers, they will rake the shit out of your speakers if you have the hi-hats too loud. Like the hi-hats need to be super low, barely audible. This is a good level here. You see the peak is like right here, but everything else is up here. And same thing for the kick. People have that kick too damn loud. If I take the kick down, all you hear is 808. But if I turn the kick up where you can barely hear it above the 808, you know there's a kick there, but it's not going to be like overpowering the 808. If I turn the kick up too loud out of the wrong speaker, you won't hear the 808 at all. So right around here sounds good. So that's how you mix it. Just level it like that. Blood overdrive again as an exciter. Then I put reverb. This is the cool part. That's what makes it sound pretty cool. Now, I have the low. Why does it sound cool? Because I have the decay on 0 0.1 seconds. That means it's just boosting the sound like a little short reverb that makes it sound thicker. And um, I have the reverb set to 50 something percent. 53 is good. This is Fruity Reverb 1. It's not Fruity Reverb 2. If you're using Fruity Reverb 2, you're either super good at it or you just don't know what the hell you're doing with reverb, honestly. Why would you choose Reverb 2 when you have everything here labeled for you? It's clear what this stuff does, except for diffusion. You don't want to use that. Pre-delay, that's just like what, how much time it takes before the reverb actually hits. And this one is the how long it takes before it dies out. Um, the low cut cuts off anything below this number, which is 300 hertz just for safety. I don't want sub or bass being reverbed. That just sounds stupid. And then high cut, anything above this number will get cut. The reverb of it, at least, not the sound, just the reverb. Same thing with the low cut, reverb. Room size is how wide it's going to be. Pretty much just adding stereo, which I don't need. Um, the color determines whether you're going to get more of a bass boost or of a high-end boost. I think warmer means bass, so I did it there. High dampening is another high cut. It just really, like, it'll just turn off all the high end. And all the reverb, too, if you do too much. Versus this. That sounds good to me, so that's where I left it at. And then, for EQ, I'll give you, like, a quick EQ tip, man. Um, it says treble, high, mid, mid, low, mid, bass. Forget that. Oh, don't forget it, but, like... Think of this as like boomy, think of this as boxy, think of this as like clarity, and think of, no, think of this as like radio, radio right here, this is what's like going to play through the most speakers, and then think of this as clarity. So what do you want? Do you want it to be more, oh, it needs more boom, so I'm going to turn this up, it needs more boxy sounds, like super undefined kind of mud is right here, it's just kind of like uh, aggravating sound, so I like to cut it a little bit, that's why I have a slight dip here. And then radio sounds like what's going to sound like super, here, I'll use a frequency splitter to show you what I'm talking about. Let's turn this down. As you can see, um, I have it in between 200 and 2000 hertz. It's a little too wide. We'll just move this around as we need it. Sounds like, you know, elevator music frequencies, right? And then we'll move it over here. That's all the clarity. So you need to use that for clarity. Think of it as like clarity, radio, elevator music, mud or box. There's that boom. So there you go. That's what it really should be thinking in your head. It's like, what levels do I need for this track to sound correct? And then Maximus, this is the last part of the video. I am an, not an expert at Maximus, I'm an expert on using Maximus. I don't really know how it works that much though. I just know a lot of things about it though, like how to use it the right way. The most important thing with Maximus is making sure this has, well, I have a preset here that I use called mono low end, but as you can see, the threshold for the saturator is all the way down and the post is up. And I'll show you what I mean, how, how, how this works, right? You can even turn the compression off for all of them. Comp off just means turning up compression because Maximus is a compressor. But always have the threshold turned down this way and have the ceiling kind of here or here. So that way anything above that ceiling doesn't get played. 
or it compresses it. It's like, saturation is like a compressor that kind of widens the sound. So if I turn the threshold, we'll use master only. We'll use master only. Watch what happens when I turn the post here. This is where it clips, like right at this line right here. If I turn the gain up with this threshold down all the way here, it just gets louder and louder with nothing happening to it. But I gotta turn the threshold up a little bit. That's a little bit too much. But you see how much louder it got versus this? So if you turn the threshold down and turn the post up, keep the threshold in a like area where it sounds loud enough, but it's not clipping. Now let's go to Yulene and see how loud it is. Oh crap. I might crash my computer. Uh, there we go. It's at nine, nine LUFS. It's better than 14. 10, good sound right there. That's how you get those loud masters. You um, go to Maximus, turn the saturation down. That's really all you gotta do, just turn the threshold down and turn the post up until it's not really making artifact noise, like stuff that you don't wanna hear. The way you determine that is how squashed the top of the audio is. It's barely hitting the top, but it's hitting it enough to the point where it's gonna compress it. If you need more details, um, just hit me up at Prod by John Marine on Instagram. Prod by John Marine on Instagram or Prod by John Marine at gmail.com. I'll answer any of your questions. Um, this beat is called Doc. It's out already. You can check it out if you'd like. If you like this beat, then you can probably watch the whole video. If not, uh, you're not here no more. So. I just want to say thank you for watching this. Uh, it's the end of the video. And, yep. I'm done. So that's how you make... Uh, I would call it like a above average beat. Say so you make an above average beat. You kind of like follow the steps here. But if you want to learn more about how you want to do it yourself, I'm going to be offering uh, mixing and mastering one-on-ones pretty soon. If you're interested in that, drop a comment below or just hit me up on the, you know, Prod by John Marino on Instagram or at gmail.com. 